Um, we loaded the toad in the back of the truck. Now, this is the system as you'll get it basically all wrapped up. What I'm going to do first, this is the two inch suction. It'll come with a cam lock, male. That has to go on your tote. Save it in case you change tote. Screws right on here. Plastic, so that's usually all it takes. The threads on the ball valve are plastic. This system, since this is a new system, we're going to have to check the gas, and uh, we ship them without the battery, the positive battery post connected. So I got to connect the battery post. Give you a little bit of what's going on. This is going to be the one and a half inch bypass hose that goes back to the tank. Set that up. Um, this one here is a two inch hose. This you can use for alternative suction. This is not used on the system. We ship it so that you can suck out of other toads, fill that toad. Set that right there. Um, this is your spray bar hose. That's a spray bar hose. You only get one. Okay. Batteries right here. You can see my hand, that's enough. They know what a battery post is. This is, by the way, we, this is a fuse. This controls uh, the power to your spray bars. That's a little 20 amp DC fuse. It's good, it's in. Close it up. And there should be a battery terminal in here. It's got big red positive on it. it goes on the positive terminal. I will park it up with my wrench in. Okay, there's extra nozzles down inside this battery box also. It goes back on. And we have a little strap here. This stuff's all sort of self-evident. Okay. Um, these are the spray bar extensions. Spray bar extensions. These take off before you set it in there to make it easier on you. They're clipped to cam locks that are welded onto the bottom of the plate. That's just for travel and storage. Place to put them. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Might as well remove this cap. This is going to be your bypass back to tank. This is coming out of the bottom of this adjustable bypass valve. This is going to be your outlet to your spray bar. We'll hook that up. This is your suction inlet. That's what we're going to hook the two inch suction hose off the tote to. This is your uh, valve. There's also a valve on the tote. And just go ahead and open this now. And I'll go ahead and set it up there. We 
taken off, the spray bar extensions, all the hose, it's ready to load up there. This is the two inch suction line. The suction is on the right side of the system facing the back of the truck. I'm gonna put it on the tote like this. Okay, now we put system on the truck. Also for shipping purposes or storing purposes, these have locks in the spray bar. You have to pull them out. You'll also lock it down once we bring the spray bar down. This cord set right here. This is your remote. This is what's going to go up into your cab. So we'll set that right there. This is the plug that plugs in the spray bar, so we got to get out of the way. And then we got to bring the spray bar down, which uh, if he's going to help me. Bring it down. These will pop in. Things that you unconnected it with. In case you put this on a larger flatbed, you can actually lower the, just the height of the spray bar. These chains you can tighten for uh, to help support the spray bar, or they can uh, hold it entirely off the back of a flatbed truck. For now, we're just going to leave them like this. Spray bar plug. Just a twist lock. already hooked up the battery so these are ready to go. And all it is two switches left right control these valves. Take this up in front. caps and plugs on all your fittings to help with when you shut down for leakage or storage or moving from site to site. Um, what I'm going to do is go 
know, this, this is spray bar hose. We're going to go in the outlet of my bypass valve. connecting the bypass. When you use a tote, all totes will have a two inch bung hole, bung cap right here. Take that cap out and then just stick this inch and a half hose through it. Stick it down in your tank and that'll hold it in there. To the bottom outlet of this. This is bypass back to tank. This is the spray bar hose. I'm going to connect it or tighten the cam locks on it. This is the suction hose we've already put it on. The tote. Now we got to wrestle it into this two inch inlet right there. This valve's open. We can open our tote valve. And now we have chemical to the pump. While I'm up here, I'm going to make a mess. Can you see this uh, Y strainer or this strainer? Yeah. This is the inlet suction strainer. It's a basket strainer. Loosen these. Lift the lid up because there's a rubber gasket in there and you don't want to rip it. And then uh, inside, is a basket strainer. You want to periodically check that. Again, lift your lid so that you don't rip the little gasket. Tighten these back down. Could open that back up now. I'm ready to start it, but one of the things you might want to do when you first start it, this is a bypass, it's adjustable from zero to a hundred. When it's loose like this, that means there's no pressure on the spring, so it's um, going to just bypass, most of it will bypass right the tank. It won't build up any pressure at all. And as you tighten this down, the more you tighten it, the more pressure will be created for your spray bar. There's this pressure gauge right here that you can watch as you turn it up, turn it down. But what I like to do is when you're first starting it, to make everything work nice and easy, if you just just tighten it a little bit so that it would probably build up maybe four or five psi. It's uh, it's also an easy way to load this tote because what you can do is you can take your suction hose, the two inch suction hose that you get that we talked about earlier, you can connect it to the suction of the pump to the tote, start this motor, leave your spray bars turned off which I'll show you later and then it'll just all bypass back into this tote and you can fill this tote from a tote on the ground that's what the two inch hose is for when you do that though it'll pump faster if this has less pressure on it so the bypass is easier okay you need to um, use these if you don't have to or don't want to but these caps come off Spray bar extension goes on. You get two nozzles. Pass them on. Tighten it down. And then take the cap. Put on it like that. Also, each nozzle has a, its own separate ball valve. Um, this valve will control this bar. So say you wanted to just use two outside nozzles. Say you were just doing the road berm a little and all you wanted to do was touch it up. You could turn these off. Leave this entire bar off using the valve. And then when you open and close this valve, 
only these two will work. Your flow, don't worry about, because again, we bypass everything that we don't need back to the tank. Okay, so I'll put the other straight one. ready to start. Um, I guess what I'll do is uh, get the control box so I can be back here. Ready? Mm -hmm. This is a control box. I'm going to turn on the right valve. I'm going to go ahead and open these. The reason I open a valve just as I start the motor, um, it makes it prime quicker. You don't need to do that, but it'll have to overcome the pressure of the air pressure in the system. This way, if we open this, we can let it, a little bit of the air bleed out when it first starts, and then as soon as it starts, you just immediately shut it off. That way, you won't get any drippage. You'll hear air spit out of those nozzles first. Now, this is a brand new unit, so it hasn't been started yet. It's got an ignition switch keys are wired to the side of it. Uh, previously we checked the oil and we checked to make sure the fuel was on. We got fuel. Um, all the valves are open so the pump can get liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. Got a little rubber boot that protects the switch. Okay. Goes in with the teeth down. Okay. This is the throttle. We're going to put it down here in the start position. Tighten it to hold it there. Turn the key and hold it works.